Pray with me, please. Father in heaven, as we meet this morning to determine and make policies and decisions relating to the students, teachers, other personnel of the school district of Levy County, we ask you, divine guidance, to be with us as we make those decisions. And for that and other things that you provide for us, we give you our thanks. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Turner. I want to welcome our guest this morning. Hello, Ms. Vaughn. How are you? I <laughs> there. And we would like to call on Miss Donna Turner. Good morning. Good morning. I appreciate your time this morning. Um, what we're bringing to you this morning, or what we're, we are requesting of you this morning, is permission uh, to make some amendments to our health reimbursement account plan. We put this plan into effect on January the 1st, 2012, where we gave every eligible employee $255 to spend for reimbursement of employee medical expenses. That plan's been in place for 19 months. We originally had 843 eligible employees and unfortunately, we still have 568 employees that still have money in those accounts. We are incurring expenses on those accounts. And to tell you the truth, we never dreamed that 19 months later, we would still have 568 employees that couldn't spend $255. Mr. Superintendent. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and can move forward with 
I think it's a wise move because a lot of times, like I say, employees never get sick, but the kid gets sick. Mm -hmm. right. That kind of stuff. Or if you don't vision and blind and yeah. those kind of things. Man, I get sick and have those openings. I think it's a smart It's a great group. Do I, any more questions? What, what about employees that were hired after January 1st? That they are not eligible for the funds. These were one time funds provided by Blue Cross and Blue Shields, and the eligibility. Um, uh, requirements was that an employee had to be employed on January the 12th when the plan went into place. So I hear a motion. I do move. Second. I have a motion to and a second to approve the recommendations for the amendment to the health reimbursement account. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. President. Now, we're going to discuss our school board policies with Mr. Hess. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. This is the public hearing. We're going to review the school board policies again. <coughs> uh, and again, at the end of this meeting, we'll get a good opinion on all or how we want to take a look at the school board policies. And I'm just going to go down in the order. Now, I'll put the correct 3.05 on your desk this morning. Uh, this just really needs to be a trade organization. The level sheet, the thing that we follow in our office is correct. It's just this one I had two copies in the wrong copy. Of the so, any questions on 3.5? This one's correct, and what was different? It's uh, what we have received. 3A, it wasn't a 3A on one. Oh, okay. Policy 3.12 is uh, public information and inspection protection of records. This is just as H and I. I 
you know, I like, I like to think it's what I had to deal with. And there are some forces that don't lend themselves. I agree with that. There are three that be stricken.
it's um, otherwise you end up with a half credit without an EOC, and the 30% is only applied in the second semester. That's not within law. It has to be applied for the whole year. So you've got two laws basically that are that, almost yes. contradict. They are because they tell us we're supposed to do half credits. Well, essentially, it's your grades and average over the whole year, as opposed to adding two semesters. It's a whole year average. Because we're doing all four nine weeks. I, I don't know how our high school guidance <laughs> counselors are saying at this point. But uh, we, we can tell you about <coughs> conversations with DOE and, and white papers they have sent out, and then they contradict that the next day. And they've narrowed it down at DOE where only two people can answer correctly the questions because they don't know the answers either. They don't answer the same twice. I bet Mike too lowered that one. Okay. <laughs> Mary Jane's happened in Lancashire with only two. And the two of them last go last meeting with each other so it's just <laughs> there will be there will be more changes to that uh, in the next legislation session. Thank you for not the rest. Anything else on four point five? Thank you, Joe. Good argument, sir. That's some of the battles that we have to we do around the internet or three from the club especially. Four point oh six graduation from high school. <coughs> Essentially, it's all courses taken the week after that in GPA. Looks like we have finally caught up with the uh, beginning in the ninth grade, certain year, beginning in the ninth grade, certain year. Looks like we have finally maybe caught except up. For except for Azure One. Except for Azure One, but still. That's still convoluted. It's okay. So, thank you. 4.141 is the wellness policy. There's no change there. It does require annual approval by the review and approval by the board. 4.02 is student assignment, and this is the one that uh, we spent some time talking about, and we'll go over here, the language that I added. It, it, this, this is the one where if there's a student expelled from another district, and should or should we not allow them in the school district. And what I put in here is that if they are expelled without services from a, another school district, then they would not be admitted to the assignment. So in other words, if another district expelled them with services, then they would be allowed, we would do a like placement and allow them to go on our alternative school. So, this is five So in other words, if they came from Marion County and they were put in IFF before they, excuse me, they were trying to pull and go to Hilltop, Marion County. If they came to Levy County, they, they were taught in Hilltop, yes. in Levy County. Yes. Is that what you say? Yes. And if they were told, you out. You're out. You out. Here too. Yes. I don't believe that Marion County expelled their students. I'm just using them for an example. That's right. Well, that, that could have bearing what it says. If another district were to act in the same manner that we do, where we expel our students from the school district, then send them to the Hill Power 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 Hill Let's say this was another district student, same situation. Would we allow that student to come in and go to your class? I'm making this they really do have an alternative setting in, in Mary County. Yes, sir, but they do not expel their students right. as we do. Right. If they're assigned to the alternative school for behavioral reasons, they would be assigned to our alternative school for behavioral reasons. The, the basic premise is that whatever stipulations another county has, we will honor that stipulation if they come here. Whatever that stipulation is. So, okay. okay. And just for the board's information, we do proceed. There are kids out there that go to the uh, juvenile justice program occasionally. And they come back to our district, but we're going to come back to the hospital. And then they're on the way out of the hospital. What if they came from a place where they didn't have a hill talk? In other words, I guess they would be, I guess they'd be, those kids would probably be expelled, right? Uh, I guess the key is what or does or has the kids, the students, educational opportunity been denied or have they, do they still have an educational opportunity? Yeah. And that's what we have to look at the order because every year of 67 counties, everyone's been there. I'm thinking about it. Once they come from Georgia. Right, and we deal with that. And we have to look at the order and deal with it, figure it out. Thank you, sir. 
is there a, uh, a limit like per event or is that a year limit? I think I'm getting that from number of parents too. There is a limit set forth in the statute. Correct. Okay, that's where it's at. Okay. And that would be on an event by event basis. Right. All right. Um, Mr. Aston, why was this policy brought up? I mean, is it, is it a new state um, rule? Is it, why was this policy brought up? Well, it's, unless you have a policy, you cannot use state funds for these purposes unless you have a policy. Okay, now the state, the law allows you to adopt a policy to use these things. But, for example, say we're having a new employee orientation and we need to use this, you know, we need to use district funds to cover something. Okay? You know, you want to buy a cake for it, whatever. Currently, we, we have local funds that are not state appropriated funds, like interest that you earn, bank accounts, leases that we have here in properties. So, you know, we have the funds and they're available for that use. But unless you have a policy, uh, you can be criticized for using state dollars for that purpose. So it's accountability for everything. It is. Say, for example, you wanted to host a joint meeting with the county commissioners here and you wanted to, to buy a sandwich, you know, to do something. You couldn't do that without having to log that up. Or no school board wanted to come in here and do something. Yeah. 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 We were very fortunate in the county, and I know the super wants to do this is to there are folks that are out there that are very generous and donate for these type of policies <coughs> and they get recognition for that and I'm not sure about that too. Seven point two five and seven point two six are both uh, new policies and they're both they're here out of an audit criticism as policies that we need to have. And um, so one is on facsimile signatures and others on electronic credit record signatures and fund transfers. These are things that we as a practice do already, but we have to have the policy. Nine point oh six is just uh, uh, updated language as indicated by statute. Same with 9.12. Again, this is update the language because of the statute. Just putting it in the policy. And 11.03 is just a, a change in nomenclature on the walls and no change in language. That's it. I know uh, I can tell you right now I can you can expect at some point there's been a change in statute on the bullying language and we're waiting on clarification from uh, our folks that provide us that information from the UPAC as to what we need to do and what we need to change our bullying policy. There's a change in the legislature this summer on that and that might be the language and fix for that. So that'll be So, need a recommendation for any or all of these policies to go So, move for approval of all of the policies recommended. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, <coughs> please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say no.
Any opposed? Say no. Motion carries. Thank you. Now moving on to the consent agenda. Are there any changes to the consent agenda? I have one change for the addition to the consent. I have a student trip request. I'm going to add on Weston High School. We're going to be taking four students in Camden to the President's Conference September 7th and I've been in the day time. That's the only change. Do you have any questions or comments on the consent agenda? Any addition to the contract? On the uh, contract with uh, daycare services, are those figures like the per day? Who sets the per day rates and stuff? Is that better than stated? It's negotiated with the individual um, daycares. Really good price. Um, it's pretty competitive, but they understand that we have two parents who need their services.
all the tree branch uh, extended from CF. We were able to use that within the lines of Caduce. And uh, she took that back to her board. The draft that she had did not have the language. But because we had the language from CF and we had made that progress, they went back to their board and we received a call last week from, uh, from Linda saying that not only were we going to help with tuition, they were going to pay for all the books for our Villa Roma students, and they were going to do what they could on the, on the tuition side, similar to what CF is doing. You know, we're not sure yet that, what that formula is. So uh, that was very positive news. We did have to cancel a bus. Um, that was the original plan for Fort Bronson High School because when we did our calculations on textbooks at $45,000 per year plus the tuition, and then we were providing the students free transportation back and forth from the school, um, we, we did that and decided that we could not afford the bus. Well, that put pressure on Santa Fe because really, data center, we make up a big part of their population. So all of those factors uh, together helped to create this, and we were very excited about this, this new prospect of working with uh, Santa Fe and CF with a real true partnership. We've always had partnerships with both of them, and uh, they, it shows that, this, that we really are uh, looking forward with that. Uh, at one time, I know there were a number of students, like from Williston High School as well, that were going to the, the uh, Archer campus. Is that still the case? Or, or we're, we're no, no there, there are some. Well, some the kids, uh, they, we offered to provide transportation for them last year. Uh, they opted out. Uh, the, the students opted out. And they, they had rather find their right to come and go instead of the yellow dog. There's something about riding the yellow dog that just doesn't seem to appear in college. <laughs> I don't know it's not cool. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> you call it the ride of shame. <laughs> 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 it's all the ride of shame. We did uh, establish a route from Williston uh, last year, but we had no takers, and so <laughs> we, we canceled that route. Um, but anyway, we do support from Williston and Bronson, the Davis Center at Santa Fe, for Santa Fe. And, uh, will, this, will this olive branch, for lack of a better word, will it maybe allow you to offer transportation to Bronson now? Yes, sir. Yeah, we have we have contacted the school and they have contacted all the parents, but we're going to send out a letter to uh, to all the parents that might have a child in Red City. Brockton, they they took advantage of us, didn't they? Yes, for, for the most part. Well, it was mandatory for Bronson. Okay. Uh, the parents in Bronson felt safer with their well, children if if we were providing transportation, and so uh, that's the reason it was there. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, but I'm very happy that that uh, Santa Fe has now, uh, you know, working with us and and like Linda said uh, when I talked to her, uh, this is not the end of it. There will be legislation again. Uh, they realize that the kickback from the school system, the K-12 school system, the superintendent was, you are not going to finance all of the human community college on our backs, and, and uh, you know, which was ridiculous. But it happened, and hopefully it's just a one-year thing. But there, there will be some adjustments next year, I know that. Which brings me to the budget. Uh, I do want to talk about the state of Florida budget. Uh, this is the first year in five years that revenue has increased uh, since 2007. It, been going down each year, and when you lose $11 million over that period of time, it's very difficult to maintain what you've been doing. Now, it did increase this year uh, to about 5% increase, but of course, things like this, you have to pay for the tuition for your dual enrollment students. Uh, the new way of calculating an FTE. Uh, full-time equivalent student. Uh, that's not just back 50 students, you know, which hurts us financially. The, uh, the increase in FRS, which we have to pay, was about a $700,000 increase. 
$700,000 increase. And so, you know, while they increased our money, they also increased our expenses. But the money did increase overall. And so, uh, you know, we we had an opportunity this year uh, to give some raises, and, and uh, I am so looking forward to that. <laughs> it will be it will be wonderful to be able to uh, do something positive for our employees. The uh, the state revenue is projected to go up very slowly each year. We're moving in the right direction. Uh, they anticipate in the year 2017-18 that the state revenue will be the same as it was in 2007. And so it's a 10-year recovery to give back to the same revenue that the state had in 2007. Now, 10-year recovery to get the revenue back, and as you well know, during this 10-year period, New regulations have been put in place. Uh, and <clears throat> there's been no, that's no adjustment for inflation. Expenses have increased. So even in 2017-18, there will not be the money available to spend that was in 2007. It'll probably be about 2020 before we actually have more an increase in funds to spend more than we had in 2007. And that kind of puts it all in perspective for you. But the encouraging thing is uh, is that the state money is increasing very slowly and, uh, and that's a good thing. The downside is it'll be a while before we're back to 2007 uh, type monies. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about our presentation in Tallahassee, and I do appreciate uh, uh, a lot of people working very hard, and, and uh, Mr. Phil Pott and Mr. Asbell going to participate in that. I do not believe we could have done anything better, planned better, been more efficient, been more articulate than what we were. I, I believe with all my heart that we did everything we need to do to set that presentation up. Uh, we had more people participate. Other people just had like a superintendent out there doing all the talking, which a lot of superintendents are good at. But we had we had emergency management, we had the sheriff, we had chief of police, we had the city uh, manager, not city manager, what is this? Council president. Council president. We had school board members, we had uh, architects, we had Mr. Edison, Mr. Clemens. Uh, we, you know, we showed total support from everybody to get our facilities uh, built in, in Wilson. We came in third out of five. Uh, you couldn't have hurt me worse if you had, uh, you know, hit me in the stomach, uh, knocked all the winds out of the However, uh, not trying to rationalize, but trying to uh, understand and get feedback from <clears throat> everything. Washington come in number one, that did not surprise me. Washington is in the district as President Gates, and there were some things happening behind the scenes there that, that they, they were number one, and, and uh, that's understandable. The surprise was Madison doing a refurbishing jumped over us. That was the surprise. Uh, it's a $17 million project to repurpose their high school. They got a sympathy vote. Uh, the the uh, Department of Education ranked us second out of the five, Washington first, leaving Kansas second. The governor's office, with their representative, ranked us number one. And that tells me that that we did what we were supposed to do. There was a sympathy vote for Madison County because uh, they have applied for this refurbishing every year since 2007 for special facility funds. And they were turned down every year. And of course, a couple, three of those years, there was no special facility funding. But every year they applied, they never got it since 2007. 
And so they just felt like a sympathy vote for them. They, they hadn't got uh, special facility funding in I don't know how long, many, many years. And the remark was made that Levy County had received special facility funding in the last 10 years, which was about eight years ago for Bronson Middle High School. So there was some sympathy by one person who controls the money. And uh, that, that kind of put Madison in number two slot, us in number three. It would have been nice if we'd been number one. I would have felt like we had Williston Middle High on a silver planner. That didn't happen. So now what that means is uh, we will continue to work very hard, very diligently, that we will make sure that everything we do is the right thing to do to get that school built. Now, DOE tells us, don't worry, they will fund at least three projects because the money is there. Last year, they would have funded Dixie and, and Glaze. Dixie at 50 million, Glaze at 28 million. And so, if you take the 20 for Washington, the 17 million for uh, Madison, and our 34 and a half million is still is in the same ballpark as what they would have funded last year. So they said three three slots, no problem, you'll be funded. But I'm not taking any chances. We're going to work as hard as we can to make sure that we're funded. Is this the final recommendation that will be going forward to whoever? Next March, I guess. Oh, yes. Okay. I mean, we. They actually recommended all five projects be funded. All five projects will not be funded. Uh, with the increase in revenue, maybe there'll be four projects funded. I don't know. But, but one thing I do know, I understand. I understand the budget process between when the president of the Senate, the Speaker of the House, and the governor's office sits down, and when the governor starts line and vetoing. I've been so involved in the CF campus in Cleveland. I know how that works. We need to cut money. We need to save. We need to cut here. We cut everything. So being number three, whatever, uh, is it, it, is reason for me to believe that there is a very good possibility that we will be funded, but don't sit on your laurels. Don't take it for granted. Continue to work, do everything you can to make it happen, and, and that's what we're going to do. Any other questions about that? Comment? Mr. Bill Potter? Well, <clears throat> I guess I wasn't going to say, I said it just to do it. You know, I've, I've always been proud of the Alpha County, and always proud of the members of the board. And I'm going to tell you, I felt, you know, I'm just real, real impressed and felt really good about how everybody did it that the other day. I don't think we could do that anymore. Uh, you know, and it, I think we're going to be proud of what we've done. Uh, we just have to wait and see what happens. But I, I just couldn't feel any better about what everybody said and what everybody did. After that, we, and, and then the third day, we just got to fight to keep him in the stump. But hey, you know, we'll, we'll move on. But I'm awful proud of everybody over there. And I'm glad I'm leading Me too. I, there, there's no doubt in my mind we gave the best presentation there, hands down. No, no doubt in my mind we were the best presentation. Best prepared, best presentation. But some things are beyond our control. Uh, unfortunately.
Thank you. Mr. Turner? A couple of comments, please. We, um, regarding the situation as it comes back from Santa Fe and the dual enrollment, uh, I think it would be in order and would like to recommend that we ask the superintendent to send a letter to the folks at Santa Fe on behalf of the board, uh, either thanking them or whatever to come around to the best decision from our perspective. Uh, this little PR work in there, and I, uh, I think that would be in order. So, we'll, so, we'll take care of that. You also indicated that um, we got a little bit of money possibly that we're looking at for races. Yes, sir. And it's also that uh, we're not getting anywhere currently with the negotiation with the union. Well, we we got to wait on the ULP for the 2011-12 contract. The ruling on it. I just want to go on record, Mr. Superintendent, that uh, because of some of this language and not dealing with anything money wise in the negotiating that's going on there, if the union continues to hold up these folks getting their well deserved raises because of some, as I see it, logical contract language that we proposed, shame on them. And I'd be happy to stay totally on the record. Making that statement. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Brooklyn. Mr. Brooklyn. Well, I could, but I'm afraid that was cut into our executive session. Now, just can you just give me a general update on opening the schools and how everything went across the county? Basically, all the schools reported they had the, uh, the <coughs> that everything was great. Uh, two Bronson schools said the best opening they ever had. Uh, the, all the schools indicated that they had a very, very good opening. It's very smooth. A lot of preparation, and, and I congratulate the uh, administration staff that does for the teachers that they, they did so much preparation to make sure that they were ready. That, that's why the is a very good school opening. We always have some bus issues at the beginning of the school year. Uh, I've never ceased to be amazed at how many parents have no idea what bus their child's supposed to ride before school opens. Uh, but you know, we have those that want their high school students carry two blocks to the they let off at the front door instead of walking two blocks. And, uh, those things amaze me, but that's part of the. It doesn't even snow anymore. Have to walk in the snow. And it wasn't so sometimes, like thank you. It was I remember. It was hot. Okay. It was hot. Hot. Yeah. But basically, everything was, was very good. Yeah. Um, you know, I get comments like, five a day calls or questions every time I'm you know around teachers and things about you know are we getting a raise are we getting a raise are we getting a raise and um, and I you know I, I'm telling them that you know please read the facts please read um, your emails please come to the school board meetings please you know that everything's out there but I mean I, you know we do get I, I get a lot of comments and, and questions about that so just hope that we uh, can get everything um, together and work on and so that and I won't ever I sure hope that every teacher every employee they're out there they're, they're informed I want them to know the actual the, the truth and the facts and what's happening so well there's a lot of misinformation that right. comes out from a certain party and uh, you know and it's hard to overcome that too but we, uh, we address it as we can right yeah. thank you that's all I have thank you Mr. First of all, Dr. Winnick, you're no longer on my list. Thank you very much for all your hard work. So I was on him about the bus, and I appreciate the hard work that went into that. So because I know I had several phone calls from not only parents but staff members that were worried about the number of kids that it was going to affect with the bus to Bronson. So I really do appreciate the hard work that went into that. So it was well. Good news, so I had good news from Dr. Winnick, so I appreciate it. So, um, Mr. Ted, 
maintenance, thank you very much for all you did. I know I had to call you last week about a little situation that you guys got taken care of, and I appreciate all the hard work that goes into getting our schools ready for opening day. So thank you all very much, and that goes along with our buses too, Mr. Steve. Thank you very much for the hard work that goes in the route. Um, I was at our at Cedar Key yesterday, and um, it went off very swimmingly. So we had a, a nice assembly, and I appreciate. Miss Darby and, and what the tone that she's setting there in Cedar Key, and I think it was a very positive stuff. Tone had quite a few new students that were there uh, yesterday getting scheduled, <coughs> and getting going, so I think that was a positive and kind of spread throughout both elementary, middle, and high school. So, and um, big thank you to the staff here at the district office, all the Common Core training and stuff and things that went on this summer to kind of amazed me that every week to see the different type of things we've got teachers all over and um, you know watching looking at facebook last night and seeing all the pictures of the first day of school and all the hard work that our teachers put in with our classroom seeing posts from sunday night at midnight teachers being up at their rooms getting their, everything ready for students i know there's a lot of teachers a lot of students that had great first days this day last two things is uh, Representative Stone came and spoke at Rotary last week and I appreciate Mr. Philpott coming. Uh, he was my guest and Assistant Superintendent uh, Jeff coming and uh, I thank you for all the hard work. So Jeff CC'd me on, on uh, the presentation and what went on in Tallahassee and I know there was a lot of hard work and a lot of people pulling together and uh, <coughs> a lot of people um, you know had conversations with Jason Kaysen from over in the council, and uh, I'm just very thankful that we got a lot of people working really hard for this project, and uh, I don't think it by no means is it out of the water yet, so we're going to keep working. So, but appreciate everybody's effort on that. I will make mention, too, that I had a lengthy conversation last night with uh, Representative Stone, and uh, uh, he, he's very, uh, you know, I won't say concerned, but very diligent about helping us any way he can uh, with that project and so uh, it's good to have people in your court in Tallahassee too. Very much so. And Senator Dean's been very good to us. Always. Also, so always. always. So just happened to see Representative Stone last week and he spoke and right. so, uh, appreciate that. Appreciate that he represents Levy County oh, and it's not split up so. Me too. I, you know, I don't I would yeah. say this about him. He, he has made it a a mission of his to learn everything about uh, Levy County. And he has been all over this county since the legislation was amended to make sure that he touches base with everybody. And and he, he fully welcomes feedback from all of our, our citizens. And, and that's, that's a welcome sight there. No issues. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing for now. Thank you, Mr. Delaney. Uh, the only thing I have is, um, is a follow-up. We, we began the uh, board certification Possibly, yeah. Thank you. When are we going to get back to that? Uh, have you heard anything? Or, uh, not recently, but we we were given a, we need to a date. Come on. Sir? We need to collectively get together on a date. We do. We were given a date in the fall, and we're in the fall now. I was under the impression we had been sort of given a thing, but I may have misread emails. Yeah, we, we were. But I, I, I just... You could have gone. Will we put the contact in the folks? Yeah. I thought, they, I thought they said, here are some possibilities and let us know this works for you. Something to that effect. I don't know. Well, no, I have a September... Um, 19th to the 20th, and I kind of questioned that down, but maybe that was when I put down we were thinking about the Ocala and we've already done the other one. So I, I didn't know, maybe I was well, um, just got that date down. We, we've listed, you know, two options. Right. And our first option was in the spring, and we did not get that, and so they told us we could have an option in the fall. No, our first uh, option was the, I think, I may be wrong now. Our first option was the Ocala date, and that was the 19th and the 20th. And I think that's what I had kind of down, but we didn't get that, so that's why we went to the other one. We went to Panama City. Panama City, is that right? Yeah. But I'm talking about our follow-up. Right, our follow-up, yeah. 
There was an email that came out. Paige, I thought you said you were you were going to get with everybody. That's why I backed off. Of it. Well, I think maybe I missed that too. Okay, <laughs> I'll get back I'll back on it. And the uh, yeah, because I thought we were, yeah, we never did answer that. Okay. Right, okay. We we will follow that up, Miss Pam, and then we will contact each of y'all since y'all can't be out of sunshine anyway. Mm -hmm. So we'll we will we'll make contact with each of you. In the I do know the 19th and 20th. I will not be in town. September 19th and 20th. I will be in town next week. Sweet uh, That's the only thing I had. Everything I have covered. Uh, September's not good. October's not good either. I think it's the only meeting when they come here. Because you never have a good job. <laughs> that's what you need to see. I think that's right. Yeah, they come right, here. Right, they, they come, come here. here. Yeah, they come that's here. That's the next thing we all set. And it's not, so a, it's not nearly as long as that other one. We had to rank the modules on what they wanted to come. I'm right. looking at the email right here. So oh, that's, good. What, okay. that's what we need to do. There was an email from Andrea Messina to each of us. Chris, would you email that to us? Yeah, go over that to us. Yeah, yeah, just search it over there. When was that sent to us? Uh, the week after our plea were in. <laughs> All right. Thank you for your diligence, Mr. Cowart. Is there anything else? If not, meeting is adjourned. I don't believe we're going to have an executive session. I see no meeting. Meeting is adjourned. Have a lovely day.